All right. What's going on, family? Spencer Mack back at it again, coming to share all of the things I find most valuable for us to generate vital health and find the most joy possible out of this life. And as I've said before, I search far and wide for different herbs and exercises and meditations to find balance in my energy, in my clarity of mind, in just the way that I feel in my life. And I've had the most profound influence and advancement in my joy and in my health and my training just from gaining a deep understanding of the fundamental minerals. Whoops, overlooked that one in my pursuit. So, you've heard me speak on potassium and magnesium before. A lot of you guys ask what my current formula is, so I want to jump on here today and share with you where I'm at right now. I'm actually working on formulating this into a thing, into a product potentially, ultimately. I've shared the beta version with a couple friends and one of them has had the same kind of like, man, experience that I have. It's like this thing that's been fundamentally missing for so long. And if you look at these elements, particularly magnesium and potassium, I would say those are the two most necessary ones to perhaps um, you know, indulgent, to purchase, to obtain, to make sure you're getting in your diet. Potassium and magnesium are two of the most commonly um, widespread deficiencies that we have in this day and age. Potassium, you need 4.7 milligrams a day is the RDA for a male. 4.7 grams. 4.7 grams, I mean. That's a lot. That's the largest, most abundant need in the mineral kingdom that we have. And magnesium, though, the need is much lower. It's 350, 400. It's harder to get, being if you take a lot at once, it's not necessarily that absorbable due to its laxative or water um, hydrofolic effect. So, I actually intend to continue to expand this formula deeper and deeper into the trace minerals. Now I'm diving into zinc and copper, and selenium and iron, and I've seen from my studies that when we put these things in our drinking water and drink them throughout the day, there's actually a higher absorbability as opposed to taking large doses. So, since minerals are water soluble, I am just going to create <laughs> a mineral blend that I put in all my water. That's why this water is a bit cloudy. This one isn't even fully loaded, so to speak. But I get a gallon like this, and then I'll list the elements or the products that I'm using currently down below. I get a gallon like that. I have two different sources of potassium because if you use all potassium chloride and then sodium chloride and if you're using magnesium chloride you're gonna go too high on your chloride so it's important if you are choosing to use these I'm gonna pull up some numbers if you're choosing to use these that you analyze your daily intake because you don't want to overdose on these things even though from what I understand it's pretty hard to there's actually not an established upper limit for potassium so to speak so potassium I've read um, clinical documentation of people reaching overdose at 18 grams where they experienced hyperkalemia is what it's called and that can be extremely dangerous um, but 18 grams is quite hard to reach you would actually have to take uh, what is that 36 grams of potassium chloride to reach that because it's roughly half potassium Supposedly, our hunter-gatherer ancestors used to take or ingest up to 15 grams of potassium a day. Don't know how they figured that one out or where they got it because when you try and get it from your diet, it's quite difficult. You gotta eat like 10 servings of fruits and vegetables, um, or vegetables, I mean, leafy greens in particular, highest potassium content in the food world. So, that being said, trying to avoid too much chloride by using all of these different supplements that are attached to chloride ions because you don't find potassium or sodium in free form by itself in nature. It, it's very reactive so it attaches to different things. You can get amino acid chelates that are highly absorbable but they're lower percentage of actual elemental 
electrolytes, say potassium or calcium. So the upper limit of chloride is 3,600 milligrams, 3.6 grams. So I try to avoid, or actually, yeah, that might be, actually I think that might be close to the RDA. I might have my uh, columns off here. I believe the RDA is actually pretty high up there, like 2,400 milligrams, somewhere around there. That being said, trying to avoid getting too much chloride, I use both potassium chloride and potassium bicarbonate, half and half. Now, make this blend at your own risk, of course, not a doctor, and understand that the body can acclimate over time. At first, it may cause uh, digestive upset. The two people that I've shared it with so far have not experienced that. But things like magnesium, some people have a lower threshold of before they experience the laxative effect. So take that into mind and slowly titrate, meaning gradually increase your dosage of these. I'll leave the measurements down below in the description. Um, but I'm taking a gallon like that, which is somewhere around 3.3 liters. And I'm taking a teaspoon of both potassium chloride and potassium bicarbonate. So that gets me roughly 4.75 grams of potassium in that gallon of water. I drink that throughout the day. I use it if I'm whenever I make my smoothie or my elixir in the evening. Um, along with the potassium, I add magnesium. Right now I'm way into magnesium chloride sourced from what they call deep ocean water. I believe that's it. Deep ocean water. There's a term for it. Basically they are pumping up water from 600 to 800 meters below the surface. And it just so happens that the second highest element in ocean water is magnesium. Deep ocean water that is. It collects, perhaps it sinks due to its um, molecular or its weight. Um, and they desalinate it, take out the sodium, and then they can powder it, which I'm trying to locate a powder uh, version of it. Contacted a couple companies. Most of them you'll find in a liquid concentrate. That's what I'm going to recommend in these details. I have a link and I have it all listed on my Amazon page. Um, so that's where I'm getting my magnesium. Now you could use magnesium sulfate, you could use uh, magnesium chloride. Like I said, just be wary of the amount of chloride you're getting. Um, so that's potassium and magnesium. And I put myself about 600, sometimes up to a gram of elemental magnesium in my water. Ease into that one slowly. Remember the RDA is like 400. I'm working on repletion. So I'm trying to get above the RDA of all of these elements. My theory is I, pro I provide ample amounts of the minerals and I fast chronically. That provides my body a greater ability to let go of the unnecessary. I feel that if I provide just over what is considered the RDA, I'm going to have an abundant amount and I can replete gradually any depleted stores that I have. I have to say it is working right now. <laughs> so, um, you know, right now that's where my research and study is. I know, for instance, if you take too much phosphorus, it can lead to calcification of the soft tissues. But, supposedly, when it's in the right ratio with calcium, they balance each other out. So there's intimate relationships between these different minerals, sodium and potassium pump, send all the electrical signals through our nervous system, regulate the water and communication of information and nutrition. Magnesium, I see, is kind of like the overlord, the control master. It has a lot of different roles in production of uh, metabolites and metabolic processes. I'm not an expert in it by far. I'm just finding the RDA, which is the recommended daily allowance, and then the upper limit, which is the highest amount you can take without worrying about side effects, and then placing myself somewhere in the middle of all of these. So that's my magnesium dosage. I could take up to 1.2 grams even a day. So that's because I'm looking to saturate. If you're around 400 milligrams, you're set. And that's including the food you eat. So remember, get on chronometer, 
plug in what you're getting. Don't overdose on these things chronically. So that's potassium, magnesium, sodium. I'm really going for like, let's see, I guess I'm around two and a half grams because I'm putting a teaspoon recently, a teaspoon of salt. And this is salt, uh, real salt it's called. Supposedly it contains a little bit of iodine, which sometimes I add as well. Um, that's also on the list. And so I'm putting about a teaspoon of, you could either use Celtic sea salt or the real salt, putting that in the water as well, into the gallon. Um, after that is the calcium and phosphorus. And they come together in a molecule called calcium phosphate. And this happens to have a pretty ideal ratio, slightly more calcium than phosphorus. Now, the upper limit of calcium is around 2,500 milligrams a day. The RDA is 1.2 grams for calcium. The upper limit for phosphorus is around 4 grams, and the RDA is around 700. So I'm really going for a 1 to 1 ratio, or just slightly less um, phosphorus, and I'm on the higher end. I've seen some studies showing that athletes can benefit from a higher calcium intake. Most minerals in general, athletes just burn through them or sweat them out. So that's why I am aiming towards the higher end of these numbers. So that's, that's the basis of it. Like I said, soon I'm going to expand this. I already am taking and experimenting with copper, zinc, selenium, and chromium, and iron. And the deeper you get, the more complex it gets. But eventually I am looking to have a complete mineral supplement that I dose all of my water with and just call it a day on the minerals <laughs> I freaking feel okay about it so like I said it's been night and day to me with the potassium um, magnesium potentially the iron too just the mineral depletion changed my freaking life and it's so fundamental so basic so I wanted to offer to you guys where I am at with my current experimentation like I said the link is in the Amazon link down below in the description and if you like this information, if you appreciate these kind of ideas and videos, please like and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you can jump on here because I jump on kind of randomly. And um, I'm all about some questions. So if you guys have any questions, please uh, throw them up on the board now. We'll check them out. And otherwise, uh, please leave them in the comments section below. Really appreciate all the engagement, guys. It's a uh, big help to keep the topic and conversation flowing. The more that I get to focus and repeat these ideas and actions, the more refined my own practice gets. So I have to say I recommend sharing and teaching what you learn and what you're fascinated in. Not only does it help the people that get to hear you, but it helps you drive it in even deeper. Hey brother! Hope you have a great evening. Thank you brother John. All right, Captain Amazing, what up, dude? All right, well, if there aren't any questions, give another couple seconds. We got lag time on here. Ah, but yes, so gradually titrate, gradually raise up the intake of the minerals, and let me know your feedback. Like I said, I'm particularly stoked on one of my friends. He's had chronic fatigue, just like sleeps all the time. Always is just tired. And he's just been on this for five days or so, and he's stoked. So it's the fundamental basis of our electromagnetic body. I think I shared before I saw a video demonstrating or a documentary talking about the evolution of the Earth. And they demonstrated that in a scientific laboratory, that if you have water with minerals and then electricity, basically they replicated a lightning it forms amino acids. Same thing at the depths of the ocean in these hot sea vents, these hot deep ocean vents. There's also life down there. So heat, pressure, water, minerals forms amino acids. So minerals and life are just intimately related. They are the structure and the way that we spread or expand and communicate and create in this physical world. They are the rock, right? It's the earth element. The things that, you know, you want to talk about getting grounded 
and not feeling grounded, try really dosing up on the minerals in a balanced way. All right, David Loy, what's up, brother? Yeah, isn't that interesting with the magnesium in the depths of the ocean? I found that fascinating. Magnesium is like the gatekeeper. He's he's the jam. It's uh, really fascinating. I'm stoked to see where all this goes once I really get saturated. Awesome, guys. Hope this was helpful. I'm going to peace out for the day, and I'll be seeing you guys soon. Lots of love and aloha.